Plumbers Don't Wear Ties returning is an example of how YouTube culture and memes can manifest themselves into a real thing. I think the most common question when seeing that Plumbers Don't Wear Ties is coming back is why? Why on earth? I think the project is very interesting from this perspective of who else would bother remastering the worst game of all time to the level that we are trying to remaster it in terms of adding all these extras and these exclusives and these, you know, bonus features. Somebody somewhere thought like, what is the silliest game we could ever think of like release, releasing on modern platforms? There's no cash grab in Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. This is actually one of the hardest jobs we could possibly give ourselves because we now have to give you a reason to buy the worst game ever made. I think it's really important to kind of recontextualize games that maybe culturally up until this point have only been the butt of a joke. You know, like everyone knows plumbers don't wear ties, but does anyone actually know plumbers don't wear ties? How many people really know the bad games or have had a chance to play them? And I feel like from a historical perspective, somebody needs to be making these historically bad games accessible again so people can satisfy that curiosity that they have in understanding why these games are so bad. Remember the bad parts of your history. Just remember them in context. I think this is a good context to engage this game. When you go to a museum, not everything there would have been considered high art at the time of its release. We understand this, and Plumbers is certainly not high art. But it's a part of our culture, right? And it represents something that was really unusual for the console space. Anything that brings us closer to all video games of all history being available, I, I think is, is a very noble effort, even when it results in the release of the worst video games. There's a strong argument for the preservation of the worst games ever made being just as important as the best games ever made. Sometimes those interesting experimental efforts are more interesting to look back on than something that was, you know, just really good and, you know, hit the ball out of the park right away. The, the, the kind of noble, ambitious failures are as interesting to look back on as the successes. Those games, they can contextualize and tell you a slice of life of when these games came out and what the industry was like when they came out. Being able to actually look back at it and understand like kind of what they were doing, what the art market was like at the time, why does this exist? When you're looking at this as a complete sort of time capsule, I think it becomes a lot more compelling. And yeah, I don't know that this game sort of has a legacy that's very special and very one of a kind. This thing that we did in 1993 is this game, either people love it or they hate it or they think it's funny. And you get all, you have fan clubs of Jane. And then I looked at the views. I'm like, this game is in the millions. People are actually checking this shit out. I'm <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I hadn't thought about it in years. So to see this coming back up and to have somebody remember that, that's cool. So I want to say thank you for supporting an effort to remaster a game that nobody would have ever expected to get a remaster. And your support of projects like these will enable us to do more things like this in the future and remaster more games that are unexpected, forgotten, but historically significant to some level. You know, games that other people might not touch because they're bad or they're not, you know, games that have this huge wide amount of appeal. And I really appreciate people who will support endeavors like that.